Good evening, everyone. Welcome to South Houston Bible Institute's Stewarding Your Personal Finances. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about money-saving tips as we continue our journey on just improving in so many areas of our financial lives. My name is Greg Pear. I am the course organizer, one of the instructors. We've had great other instructors uh, so far. And next week, uh, Coach Kelly Lytle is going to be joining us, and I'll share a little bit later on what she's going to be uh, teaching us. But uh, as we get started tonight, um, as always, I would love to have, now that we're four, five, six weeks in, um, you know, I know we probably sound like a broken record, uh, do a budget, make some decisions, be an all-in and an all-out, um, and uh, really remember your why. And if you remember your why, um, some of this how is not quite so difficult. So um, now that we're four, five, six weeks in, I would love to hear some stories of anyone who maybe has tried carrying some cash for a while or started cash or uh, had a chat with uh, children. I think Diana um, was going to try some uh, divvying of, of spending money to them as opposed to every time, every time, every time. But um Let's open up and, and either share some successes or maybe one little thing you've changed or you've shopped for this or you've tried this or you've done this. Go for it, Diana. I, I Do I have to unmute you? I don't think I do. I have. Yes, I what's, uh, what's going on? Oh, everything, <laughs> but it's good, it's good. Well, I did try something different this time. Actually, I really haven't spent, um, you know, not much more money than what I normally do. Uh, I still have my little six dollars in my envelope. But one of the things that one of my friends shared with me that's gone through a program like this, she told me to shop in my pantry instead of going out to eat shopping my pantry. She said, you, you'd be surprised how much food you have in your pantry. And that's what I did. So I was able to cook at home instead of going out, you know, to eat. Um, I did make a list of things that I want to put in a consignment store, um, maybe even on eBay, you know, to try to get my savings and get my thousand dollars raised. And also I'm back to use my coupons at the grocery stores. Yeah. So, yep. So you probably maybe read a little bit about this. You stole a little bit of thunder. It's actually one of the numbers that I've highlighted to talk about. Hopefully everybody got the PDF that Coach Kelly and I put together. But check this out. Um, let's see. Where is it? Um, there you go. So uh, money saving tip number 54. If you're running a little short and you need to save extra for something, in a short amount of time, skip a grocery trip and shop out of your pantry. Yeah. And freezer. You will most likely have enough items to make it a week or two if you get creative with recipes. And all of a sudden, you've got an extra 100 to $200 in your pocket for that particular month, that particular issue. And again, now, now these are some hardcore things that we are doing while we are trying to get out of debt or while we are trying to save for our thousand dollar emergency fund. So uh, well done. I mean, my wife and I are in the same uh, boat. I'll share with you in just a minute. Um, what is today? The 28th, I think. Uh, and our grocery envelope is empty. And so it's like, uh, you know, and we are, we've been debt free for 15 years. Our house is paid for, our car is paid for. We tie the church. We can pretty much afford anything that we want. But by golly, we're eating out of the freezer in the pantry um, because we have trained ourselves, you know, to say no a little bit. The power of no allowed us to retire, you know, in our mid 50s. So well done. Um, the other episode I want to ask you about, I know, I think last time, I think we talked before the class, not necessarily during the class. I hope it's OK if I share this. I think you were going to try giving your teenagers whatever their normal quote you know, monthly or weekly allotment is, as opposed to I'm going to the game for concessions. I need concessions. I need concessions. I think you gave them kind of sort of a lump sum, if I understand correctly. And you said, that's it till payday or something. How is that little, how's that little experiment going? Well, it's going okay. It'll be, you know, the month of October. 
when uh you know they'll you know get their other little money from me i give them each 20 dollars and that just gives them a little money to put in their bank account and they're allowed to to spend uh a certain amount their parents allowed to spend a certain amount once a month they can go shopping so yeah that goes good it's working okay. well well done i'm proud for you get that thousand dollars way to go who else yeah. who else look at that diana you are inspiring me that's what this is all about Go, Diana. Go, Diana. Audrey, just do it. If your why is strong enough, why are we doing this? Is it so we can retire early? Is it because we can be less stressed about money? Is it because we hope to improve relationship with our spouses over money? Is it, um, you know, I'm getting close to retirement. I'm starting to sweat a little bit because I don't think I have enough. If your why is strong enough, the stuff we're talking about doesn't sound so you know, so, so terrible. And, and you guys, this isn't brain surgery, eat out of your pantry. I'm going to go ahead and expand on this before I kind of officially start. You're, you're probably going to fall over on this one. I do not recommend stocking up. I do not recommend buying in bulk. Now here's the issue stocking up. Every time you stock up, you want $1,000 of savings? Look in your freezer and in your pantry. Why do you have 18 cans of tomato sauce? Probably because you impulsed and you thought it was on sale. But what that's doing, and we, even when you buy in bulk, and I've got some pictures, I'm not going to share them tonight. But I was in Walmart not too long ago, a, a six pack of something, I don't remember what it was, uh, canned veggies or canned something they were selling it in a six pack I, I don't know it's something like six dollars let's just for easy math because I don't have the specifics six pack six dollars an individual can was 94 cents so you're paying a quarter more for a six pack but you are draining your bank account instead of 94 cents you're spending $6. So, and I just helped a, a buddy, a friend of mine at church. I helped his parents move from a home into a uh, kind of an assisted living apartment, independent living place. And we wore ourselves out carrying canned goods and bags and bags and bags of dried beans because they thought there was going to be a food shortage and they wanted to stock up. Meanwhile, they didn't have enough money for their deposit on the apartment. My buddy had to cover the deposit on the apartment. And of course, he was polite enough, but driving home, I could tell that he just vented. Thank you so much for moving. Thank you for helmet moving. I'm so mad at you. My parents, you know, they have $2,000 worth of canned goods and beans, you know, and then here I am paying the deposit for their apartment. So uh, for the apartment. So, um, you know, and and also, if you buy in bulk, you're going to argue, yeah, but I can save 36 cents, you know, great, but don't be short. The, the only thing with buying in bulk, it drains. I would rather have a little bit more money in groceries and not say, oh, well, I bought a six pack. Now, if you use it, if you use six cans of tomato sauce in six days, yeah, that's a convenience factor, not going to the store. I'm saying you know, well, I'll eventually get to using it. But from month to month, and if we're monitoring our groceries on a monthly basis, you don't need to buy two to three months worth of stuff because it's depleting that particular month's supply of cash. To help save my $1,000, I found clothes in my closet that still had tags in some stores with generous return policies, took them back, I found a consign. I will sell well over a thousand within a few months. That's winning. That is well done, Annette. Way to go. See, you guys are inspiring each other. Um, and if we wouldn't have had this class, those clothes probably would have sat there. Um, but if your why is strong enough, you'll figure out why. I don't know if it'd be too poor personal, Annette. What motive? What is your why for this class? Is it stress? Is it save more money? Is it provide for my kids what type that in the chat I, I don't remember what your why was you know why why are you even doing this is it I want to retire earlier I want to be able to give more I want to reduce stress of debt I want to get out of debt 
um, what was your what was your kind of emotional calling for this class? And while she's doing that, I'll see if there's anybody else. Uh, other success story or some one thing that you've changed. So there's two things. Uh, Diana did a couple of different things. Retirement and honor God to be a service to him financially. So there you go. Is that worth? So she she's not doing that for me. She's not doing that for you guys. She's doing that to honor God. She's getting rid of some clothes. You know, uh, that's a strong calling. You know, and, and there's, you know, I mean, you can't say anything other than honor God with my finances. Well, then let's start honoring God with our finances. And every one of us could stand to improve. Just, you know, if that's your strong enough calling, uh, there's no reason not to get our butts in gear. Well done, young lady. Who else? Share something. One little change. One little tidbit. Has anybody tried uh, an envelope, cash envelope for eating out or groceries other than Diana? Or are we rolling around to the pay period where maybe it's coming up on the uh, coming up on the end of the month? We're going to we're going to try anybody who is paid on the on the first or whatever. We're going to try stuffing some money in an envelope for cash or eating out. And when it's gone, it's gone. Uh, well, I'll share um, some encouragement for me, uh, just between me and my wife. Uh, we've struggled a lot sometimes to get on the same page financially. And this past couple of weeks, just talking to her about some of the tidbits that I've received from this class and several other financial classes in the past, I think we've we've hit a stride to where we we, we decided to finally to, to get on the same page about looking at a budget. I think in one of the classes we talked about one of us is a nerd and one of us is just the other person. Well, I happen to be the nerd of the family in the lack of a better term. Uh, so uh, my wife has agreed to sitting down and looking at a budget and and what by doing so, uh, we've looked at and seen how much money we actually are spending unnecessarily. Uh, so I think that was a real eye opener for her and myself to where we can get on the same page moving forward. So I think that was a good breakthrough for the both of us. Uh, amen. I mean, thank you for coming. We'll see you next week. You just made me cry. Um, I mean, that uh, that's what it's all about right there. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of words of wisdom, Michael. She doesn't want a two-hour budget committee meeting. She and, and set the microwave timer for 15 minutes. Baby doll, I need 15 minutes. Because us nerds, we could talk about this for days. If you are not a money nerd something, you know, and throw yourself under the bus, man, I think I miscalculated. You mind looking at what we spend on eating out again? What do you think that number should be? Also, don't do this, Michael, and I'm sure you haven't. Don't prepare the budget and take a tour and say, what do you think? Because there is no input from her. You need to make sure that in any way, shape or form, we need to trick her into getting involved, you know, so so um, even if it's something she loves, what do you think would be a reasonable amount for you to spend on kids clothes or clothes? I, I or, agree. You know, I agree. totally. Uh, yep. So uh, what I've so, done is uh, I think last one of the classes you mentioned about uh, what does she like to do? I, I led with things that she likes to do and, and, and how does that look? far as encouraging her that we don't have to be restricted by the things that uh, she wants to do, but what does it look like as far as where we're headed in our lives kind of deal financially. And, yep. But we don't want to, we don't want to not enjoy ourselves, but we want to, we, we want to put it in, um, put it as a line item. Absolutely. Line. Yeah, absolutely. So case in point, and then we will get started. Um, so this little bank bag, this lives, um, if anybody breaks into my house, this is the third cubby hole to the left of the refrigerator. And that's where this lives. And so case in point. Here's the fun, here's the fun couple of ones. Guess what? I go, I have a fishing boat. I get to put money on it on a, on a regular basis. 
my wife and I, we have a classic car that requires maintenance. Now there's some, some obviously some regular stuff like home miscellaneous, you know, that's the, that's the stuff from Lowe's and Home Depot. Our budget, our budget allows this. And yes, every one of those has cash in them. Here's the fun, here's the fun envelope. We just drained it this month. There was a bunch of money in there. And I'll show you, I mean, this one. You know, there's there's well over there's well over probably a thousand, two thousand dollars in this one, because we put hundred and fifty dollars a month in there. So that lives, like I said, third cubby hole over from the refrigerator. Um, come and get it. Now, meanwhile, and you're saying, oh my gosh, no, we write checks for our bills and we pay those online and those auto draft. My wife carries a couple of things in her purse. And I'm going to show you those right here. She carries dining out. Now, dining out, the rule we have is that's when she and I are together, dining out. So that's what we have to spend for the rest of the month. This is our Christmas envelope. She was Christmas shopping this week and it was her mother's birthday. So we take, we know what we spend for Christmas and I don't even remember what our budget is, uh, probably a thousand bucks or whatever, plus birthdays, Mother's Day, Father's Day, yada, 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 yada. We probably spend about $1,800 a year on all things combined. So our budget, that's 150 a month, 150 a month, 150 a month into the gift envelope. And guess what? You know, we're ready for Christmas. I'm not scared for Christmas. Bring it. Okay. And I'm not, I'm not, please understand, I'm not bragging. I'm just showing you what 15 years of winning with money looks like with absolutely no financial worries and no debt and extra giving and all of that stuff. And then obviously um, we have our grocery, our grocery envelope. Um, yeah, the, here's here's our monthly grocery envelope. And I told you it was empty. I lied. Okay, look, <laughs> there's one dollar in it. So, <laughs> so we're shopping in our pantry. There you go. So uh, I know I sidetracked, but you guys are you guys are rocking this and you're rolling this, and that's that's what that's what it looks like, you know. It's uh, yeah, we have fun stuff in our budget because we don't have any stinking debt. That's a you know, so so get out of debt, and then you can add fun stuff like that. And to piggyback off of Michael's idea, yeah, hey baby doll, you know what what what's her thing, Michael? Clothes, shoes, purses, sewing, hobbies, crafts. Grandkids, kids, what's her thing? Shopping for the grandkids and herself. There you go. So guess what? You need to have a grandkids line item in your budget. And you need to, if if your budget can afford that. And I mean, obviously, you're not going to tell her not. But hey, based on the fact that we have this much debt, um, and we're trying to retire early and we're trying to teach this to other people at church. Are those strong enough emotional wise to where maybe, what do you think? 50 bucks a month. I mean, and, and we're going to put that in your purse and go crazy on the grandkids, but spit, shake and pinky swear, you know, when the 50 has gone, the 50 has gone. We, we do it all over again. I'm not saying don't do it, you know, cause right now, if we're not careful, I'm not saying you guys if we're not careful, it looks like, oh my gosh, I hope my husband, he, yeah, I know he's going to yell at me or say, do we really need that? Roll his eyes, you know, get frustrated, but it'll be okay in two or three days. And we repeat the process. Meanwhile, we don't pay off any debt. I'm not saying that's the Michael household. I'm just saying that's what it looks like when frustrated couples walk into my office. And that's how we, we do, we, we get over that. It's like, what do you think is a good amount on the grandkids? I'm not going to tell you not to spend on the grandkids. Because guess what? You're not going to stop spending on the grandkids. So let's just get it on the table. Let's have a healthy conversation about it. And let's agree on an amount while focusing hardcore on our other financial goals. All right. Um, so, yeah, that, it, that's fun stuff. 
So that's that's kind of what what stuff looks like. Anything else before we kind of go on to money saving tips? Any other wins? Somebody go try a cash envelope. Make sure you look at Kelly's um, Kelly's budget sheet, which, by the way, that fell on the floor. But this budget sheet does that look familiar? That's the one that Kelly, you know, and I came up with, or she taught me on. This lives with this, and on the back, it's even got the denomination of bills. So when it comes time for payday. My wife and I, we know how many 50s to get, how many 20s to get, how many 10s to get, how many 5s to get. And then we we uh, throw it in our respective envelopes. Annette Minor, question, God forbid if your budget money is lost or stolen on the month for the month, say for groceries, how do you handle that? Somebody want to answer that? I'm going to, well, yeah. So who's, who's going to answer that? You know the answer. What's the answer? called an emergency fund. That's why you have an emergency fund. Thousand bucks in the bank, does it suck that I lost my $400 of groceries? Yeah. Is it the end of the world? I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna lose my religion or miss three days worth of work because I misplaced $400, which I never have. Okay, so this goes to part B. You opened it up the can of worms in it. Ah, and your wife carries that much money in her purse. What if it gets stolen? Okay. And maybe, again, we all live in different cities. Um, my wife and I have been married for 31 years. We've yet to have a break into our house. We've yet to have a purse stolen. And I might even question you now. Watch the statistics go crazy. How many of you have ever had your purse stolen? Now, all eight of you are not going to say that. Maybe one or two of you have. But again, that's why we have an emergency fund. And I'll tell you what, going to the bank and grabbing $400 cash out of the emergency fund is a whole lot easier than canceling 18 credit cards and getting them reissued. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not living in fear. I am, I'm going back up to someone's why, uh, someone's why. Retirement and honor God. Oh, is Annette again? Okay, good. So, so am I living in, you know, it is, Am I going to let fear, you know, come into winning financially with money by carrying a little bit of cash? Am I going to let that little bit of fear, oh, what if someone breaks in or what if someone steals my purse? Is that going to um, play Trump over, got to get my finances in order? And if coach is saying we got to carry some cash and change some behaviors, I'm not going to let fear trump my why. So. You guys are rocking this. So cool, cool. All right, let's do 100 money saving tips. I guess I'll do mine first uh, and then you guys can uh, chime in. And like I say, I'm going to, I'm going to owe you, I'm going to hopefully be able to, I've got to move you guys out of the way. Seven, yeah, I think we'll be able to finish by the top of the hour. 100 money saving tips. These are things that uh, I kind of started this book and Kelly took it and ran with it. She's going to come on next week and talk a little bit further about being a smart consumer. These are just simple tidbits. The first one, um, you guys all got this in email. It's broken down into various uh, parts. Uh, number 16, it's the first one I wanted to touch base on. Draw names at the holidays for family members to eliminate the expense of buying for everyone. So everybody bought for everyone. All of a sudden, the nieces and nephews uh, you know, graduated college and they were just getting started financially. And they were like, oh, holy smokes, man, I got to buy for all these people. And so it was a little bit uh, financially uh, intimidating for them. And so to put them at ease, all the adults agreed, you know what? Um, it's not about the how much stuff we can get and give. How about if we draw names and uh, go that route? So um, you know, and, and that changes based on your family dynamics. Uh, some people retire if we're on limited budget, you know, budgets or whatever. But if you have a large family, not a bad idea. Uh, number 18. Buy, oh, my gosh. But Greg, we're so busy. This is simple. Bake a cake instead of buying one for birthdays. Um, that, that's, I mean, that's simple. You know, cake and a can of frosting. And even especially now post COVID, it seems like bakery cakes are 
you can't get a decent cake in the bakery for less than 15 bucks or so. Um, so cookies, cakes, something like that. I mean, that's, that's going to stretch your, that's going to stretch your grocery budget right there. Um, Oh, got to, got to look at this one. So this is, you guys are going to freak out on this one. Um, check for unclaimed property at www.missingmoney.com to see if you have any unclaimed for funds from a forgotten bank account, security deposit, or refund. All right. So as I was preparing for tonight's class, this is what missingmoney.com looks like. I did this. I did this. I did this. And guess what? I, I'm looking for the one that says state of Illinois. State of Illinois, that's me. Look, Lubbock, Texas. This is showing, and I, I, I've done this exercise about every year for the last year. I haven't done it in a year or two. And I thought, okay, this will be a fun money-saving tip to show folks. But apparently the state of Illinois, and I don't know if that's something when my dad passed three or four years ago, if there was something in my name, but it only says it's 25 to $50. But let's go through the exercise. Claim, view claimed properties. Owner, Greg Repair, undisclosed, select an option. I am the owner. The other options were I have a uh, POA, I'm the legal heir, I'm a coin appointed administrator, I'm a trustee, but I'm the owner. That's me. I live at 792. You know, I'm going to file the claim. Uh, let's see what this said. Let's just do this. Um, Pair, Gregory, um, I1362. And, and the, where, where this money comes from is. You may have closed the bank account and there a day or two might have switched and something may have happened where not all the funds changed. Um, I think my dad sold some insurance on my behalf and, um, you know, something happened that there were a couple of days between. I don't think it's going to take too long. Um, I guess you other, uh, okay, don't, please don't write this down. Oh, you can't see it here. I think I'm done. Undisclosed next. Uh, you have entered an unknown the amp, okay. Uh, signature required. And let's file it and see what happens. Submit, uh, what does it say? Please check the box and enter your signature. Oh. Submit. Last time I did this, I got a check in the mail. There you go. So what does this say? Um, Texas claim, your claim has been successfully submitted. Please check your email for further instructions on how to proceed. I may have to send in a birth copy of a birth certificate or something like that. But more than likely, this unclaimed property person, this is probably not the state of Illinois. They get a commission from the state of Illinois or something like that. But this is a reliable, good, good will website. So I've gone there before, says Annette. Yes, use it. So there you go. You never know. Uh, number 27 is what I had highlighted here. All right. So... Let's talk about this one. Never sign a contract for home security that includes free equipment. Instead, purchase the equipment outright and either install it yourself or have it installed. You can then find monthly monitoring for as little as $14.99 per month. I need to let Kelly know this. Um, that number is incorrect because alarm relay dot com now if you have a landline and not a lot of people do if you have um a landline 
um, landline monitoring is nine bucks a month. I pay once a year. Purchase the equipment. Okay, do the math. Let me grab a calculator. If you purchase, you know, again, all these other companies, oh, I'm going to give you $500 worth of free equipment, and then your monitoring is only $69, $79, $89 a month, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Do the math. Let's say somebody, uh, somebody in the chat, if you're willing to share, throw in what your monthly home, if anybody has monthly home security, that should be a line item in your budget, by the way. If you have it, make sure you include it. Um, what's what's that? If, if you might have home security monitoring, and if you do, throw it in the chat. All you budget conscious people, you don't have home security. Nice. And if you do, I'm not beating you up. But I, I think a typical number is, would you guys agree? Throw in what you think a typical number is. I'm so out of touch with it, but most of my budgeting clients, it seems like it was anywhere from forty to eighty dollars a month for home security monitoring by ADT or some of these others. Anybody near and dear to home security or just canceled one or something? Let's use fifty bucks. Fifty bucks times twelve months is six hundred dollars. Ooh, you just got your free equipment. No, you didn't. You know, all they do is outsource this to people like this for nine bucks a month. So if you can you can get a decent home security system for whatever, a couple of cameras and whatnot for three, four, five hundred dollars, pay some guy a hundred bucks to throw it in there and you're monitoring it for nine dollars a month and you pay it once a year. So that's that's a that's a nice little home uh good little money saving tip. I really like that one a lot. Um Let's see here. I didn't really have any other thing that uh, that totally jumped out at me. Um, shop your cell phone plans uh, is is all I can say. You need to shop those once every six months. Uh, let's see here. Uh, second generation. I'm on iPhone 10. I don't know what we're up to. Probably 13 or 14 or 15. I'm always a generation or two behind and I pay cash for the phone and um, my monthly bill stays down. So my wife and I were paying $40 a month. That's our cell phone bill. Now, again, we, we pay cash for our phones and we know we're going to replace our phones every three or four years. Okay, 2000 you know, 1000 bucks a piece or whatever they cost divided by 36 months. It's, it's, we just build it into our monthly bid budget. What's two thousand divided by? I think we do we we replace them every thirty six months. You know, so it's fifty bucks, fifty five bucks a month we put into a future cell phone or or future technology program, you know, envelope, um, those types of things. But we have forty dollar a month cell phone bill. Here's 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 a good one. I'm broke, Greg. Man, can you can you recommend? I just don't have any money for eating out. I don't have any money in retirement. You're smoking your retirement, dude. You know, that's why. Um, medications, I can't wait to hear your guys' ideas. Ask the doctor for supplies. I always get free toothbrushes and toothpaste at my dentist's office. I go once a quarter. Uh, I don't think I've bought toothpaste in the last five years. I can't, <laughs> can't ever remember buying a tube of toothpaste. I get the, she usually loads me up three or four samples. Uh, let's see here. This is another, you know, I, I don't know if I have any bankers in there, but I am absolutely will change banks if someone starts charging me a monthly checking, uh, like a monthly service fee on a checking account. I just simply go in and say, how long have I been a customer? Are you going to lose me over eight bucks a month or two bucks a month or three bucks a month? Uh, just ask to wait. Uh, let's see here. We talked about the meal planning, and the groceries, talked about the birthday cake. Um, brew coffee at home instead of going to five bucks. I mean, Starbucks. Um, 
you know, I, I got a Keurig and I buy pods for about exactly what she says, 35 to 50 uh, cents. And I've got one of the nice travel mugs. I dump it in there before I go run my errands. Uh, water at a restaurant is a great money saving tip eating out. If your why is strong enough, you'll figure out how. If your why is strong enough, you'll figure out how. All right. I want to talk a little bit about insurance this year too, uh, especially car insurance. Um, now, number 68, if you have an established emergency fund, you might want to consider dropping your, increasing your deductible. The deductible, for those of you who I think everyone knows, but I'm going to assume zero knowledge. Uh, let's talk about car insurance. The deductible is the amount of out-of-pocket expense you will pay before the insurance company kicks in. So typical deductibles on car insurance, $250, $500, a $1,000 deductible, maybe even today's day and age, $1,500 deductible. So that means if you have an, a wreck and let's say there's $10,000 worth of damage and you have a $1,000 deductible, you pay the first thousand and the insurance will pay the remaining $9,000 of that repair. Again, um, if you have an established emergency fund and once we get debt free, we're looking at three to six months of living expenses. And what I recommend for those, somewhere it's typically in the twenty to $25,000 range. It's not what you bring home every month. It's like um, if you still have a mortgage, rent, utilities, what do you need to live on? For most people, it's three to $5,000 a month by the time you pay your health insurance and your fuel and your utilities and your mortgage. I'm not talking about cable TV. You got to pay your cell phone. And I'm not talking about grandkids or shoes here. If I lost my job, if you lost your job today, what's the bare bones minimum it would take you to where you could breathe a little bit? And then, uh, again, if you've got a six-month emergency fund in place or even a $1,000 emergency fund in place, um, you can save anywhere from $50 to $200 a month on your car insurance by raising your deductible, okay, depending on um, the, you know, basically the deductible is risk. Who takes more of the risk, the insurance company or you? Well, if you shove that responsibility in the insurance company, they're going to charge you for it in your policy. If you're willing to take on more risk, okay, if we're willing to take on more risk, then the policy cost drops. So here's another tidbit. If you're taking notes, I'm going to challenge you guys. I want everybody to dig out their policies. What is your deductible? And if you've got a little cash in the bank, consider raising it and finding out how much a month that would save you on your car insurance. Does that make sense? Do we have any questions on that? You know, Greg, this is Diana. You know, I had thought about um, raising the deductible and then I thought, well, if something happens to my car, and I don't have any emergency funds, how would I come up with a thousand dollars to get the repair started? Right. And that's what exactly what 68 says. If you have an established emergency fund, then consider doing it. So once you get your thousand dollars, you know, because uh, do you know what your deductible is right now, Diana? How much, what's your deductible? 250 bucks, 500? Um, it's 500. Okay, 500. Okay. Uh -huh. And so so your homework, and you can report back to the class and everybody else can do it just for fun. Um, dig out for next week, dig out what, and if you don't mind sharing, you're bearing your soul. Thank you. Um, what, you know, for next week, tell us what your monthly car insurance payment is. And then okay. call your insurance agent. And say, hey, if I were to raise my deductible to $1,000 or even $1,500, what would my payment then be? Okay. And in some instances, the saving is not worth exactly what you just described. It's not worth the potential stress of, oh, my goodness. But 
again, in, in, in Justin in his wife's case, Kelly's case, um, Byron in his wife's case, my wife's case, um, you know, we carry a high deductible because we have cash in the bank. Now we're also decent drivers and, you know, a $2,000 or $1,000 hit is not going to really, you know, hurt us financially. Uh, again, read what it says. If you have an established emergency fund, then, you know, you might consider. So again, very good point, Diana. You're right. Let's not get the cart before the horse. Baby step number one, $1,000 in the bank. Mm -hmm. The actual policy, I was being charged for customizing when I do not have anything custom on my car. It was $60. I had to fight to get refunded that amount for three months. So Annette just found 180 bucks. If you don't understand your car insurance policy, don't, don't write the check until you understand it. Well done, Annette. Well done, Diana. That's a great question, though. Do it in the right order, you know, but you'll feel a little bit better once you have that thousand dollars in the emergency fund. Then you, yeah, maybe you can go from 500 to 750 or 500 to 1,000. And if it's only four or five bucks a month, I'm going to say, no, don't risk your emergency fund over four or five dollars. But if you're insuring several cars, and if you happen to bundle that with your homeowner's policy, I mean, so um, here's another thing. Your homeowner's policy, your deductible is typically 1%. So if you have a $200,000 house and you have someone drive through your bedroom window, that means you're out the first two grand. Um, my wife and I, we raised our deductible from 1% to 2%, and we saved roughly $1,000 a year on our homeowner's policy. We're taking more risk. We're taking some of the risk off of the homeowner's policy, and so the insurance company has less risk because we're willing to take some more risk financially. We're able to do that. Um, and then so therefore they reward us with a with a lower policy. So again, all these little bits of tidbits, maybe five or ten bucks here, six or ten bucks off of your cell phone, uh, Annette, 60 bucks off of her customizing. Oh, we're gonna stop spending a hundred on grandkids and we're gonna do 75. All these little bit of things add up to hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month that you can throw towards your goals. Is it, are you gonna get them all done by next week? No, but you know, hopefully we're not just sitting in our rears watching TV, wondering I'm never gonna honor God with my finances because I'm not doing anything. You know, so, so just a little by a little, uh, if your why is strong enough, we'll figure out how. And so great, great stuff. Great question, Diana. Um, oh, I, I uh, did I do medical? Did I go past medical? Again, also, uh, I had some clients. She knew she was going to need some sort of uh, dental work. She saved for a year. Um, I mean, busted it. it. They had a little bit of money or whatever. Um, but did you know you can negotiate with your dentist or doctor? She went into her dentist and the procedure was going to be $4,800. Um, and I told her to go in there and offer $4,000 um, and tell them you'll pay cash, you know, before the procedure. They took it. They took it. Now, yes, it takes a long time to save $4,000, but she saved. That was one of the first things I was, they were my clients for three years. And she, I got to have this done. I got to have this done. I got to have this done. Greg, I'm going to put it on a credit card. I'm going to put it on a credit card. No, you're not. Because all of a sudden, take that $100 a month on that credit card and put it in a stupid envelope. She saved, she saved $800 by having a little bit of discipline. And she, it wasn't an emergency surgery that she had to get done. I, I can't remember what it was. It was 12 years ago or whatever. Um, but, it, but it was some sort of half cosmetic, half 
kind of needed to be done at some point in time. And uh, she negotiated that down, the power of cash. Mm, I think, I think, uh, I, I think you guys have these. Um, so I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to, oh, Kelly had one good one in here. Where was it? It was, oh yeah, here's a good one. Uh, carry an empty water bottle with you to the airport past security. Once you pass security, fill it up. So you can't, you cannot take bottled water through, but you can take an empty bottle through. Great money saving tip when you're going. So um, you guys have this. Uh, we'll we'll leave, use these last 100 or last nine or so um, because this I, I mentality, outlook and behavior. You know, we got to get it right up here first. If we get it right up here first, remember our whys and commit to your family, commit to yourselves. Don't be cop outs, be all outs. Um, this stuff makes sense. You can choose not to live paycheck to paycheck. You can choose not to live paycheck to paycheck. Patterns of savings and spending. Are you willing to change some things to change some things? I can't remember who said it. If you want to change some things in your life, you got to change some things in your life. Earth shattering, right? Ask yourself if you will benefit greatly from the item you want to purchase. If the answer is no, don't buy it. Usually you'll realize you don't need it in the first place and forget about it. Pay your bills on time. Pay as many bills as you can online. Saves time and stamps. Just say no. No, it's not the right time. No, we're going to need to save up for that. No, our priority this year is save for a new car or fill in the blank. Um, no, you can't purchase that new movie right now. We have three streaming services. Um, and we view the bills on a, on a regular basis. Good place to go. Dave Ramsey, I love what he's saying is, there's a good place to go if you're broke to work. DoorDash, Uber, Christmas is coming up. Some stores hire a little extra Christmas. I'm tired. I need to spend more time with my family. All this stuff, you guys, is temporary. None of this stuff we're talking about is really permanent, permanent. Sacrifice a little. Dave's favorite saying, if you live like no one else today, later you get to live like no one else. If you work like no one else today, later you get to work like no one else. Meaning if you want to take four, five, six days off or, or go start working part-time. So all temporary. Um, all right. Uh, so that's that's kind of the, the money-saving tips per se. I want some of you guys to share kind of some of your other things. Um, I'm going to harp on the car thing while I'm waiting to, uh, uh, while I'm waiting to, um, for a few comments here, I'll get to that. That's a good one, Annette. Um, but, okay. but some of, uh, you know, cars are touchy things. Um, let's say you owe $10,000 on a car. The car is worth $15,000. I'm going to tell you to go sell the car, you know, and because you're making $400, $500 a month payments, if you've got equity in your car, and you're still making payments, consider selling it and go buy a $4,000 car or $5,000 car. Drive it for a year. You've just freed up five to $6,000 over the course of the year. Continue saving up. You're not, it's not going to be the car of your dreams for the rest of your life. But again, if your why is strong enough, you'll figure out how. That's the number one, you know, one of the, one of the, Shop your bills. Uh, consider pausing retirement for a few months and getting out from underneath a, a big car payment. Save some money on homeowners insurance or car insurance. Those five or six things right there. And you shop in the pantry one time a month. You guys, we've just you've just discovered three to four to five to six hundred dollars a month that is just slipping through your fingers on a monthly basis because we're so caught up in life. And I understand life gets in the way. You know, this is hard. 
it's not easy. You know, it's hard. If it were easy, everybody would do it. But the question you have to ask yourself, is it worth it for you? If you get a raise, do not factor it in your budget. Continue to live off regular income and save the raise. Exactly right. Uh, I'm going to just, instead of save the raise, I'm going to say, put it towards your next financial goal. Savings isn't good enough for me, Annette. I want you to name it. What are you saving for? Are you saving for a down payment on a house? Are you saving for the next car? Are you saving for kids' college? Are you saving for retirement? Just throw in a bunch of money in savings. To me, that doesn't do it. You've got to name that. Uh, I got $10,000 in savings. Great. What's it for? Well, I don't know. I'm just saving. No, you're not. Because you'll accidentally go buy a couch. Oh, well, I do have that dental procedure coming up. That's $4,000. Um, and I, I would like to have a down payment on a house. I need $12,000. So just be very specific with your savings. But you're right. Uh, don't factor it in your budget. And again, um, if, if someone is bold enough, I don't know if anybody's contributing a big chunk into retirement. Again, do the baby steps in order. You know, we got to get out of debt first and then we'll double and triple up on what we're saving into retirement. Uh, hi, good evening. Uh, I have uh, something I do for insurance as well as for uh, utility bills, especially light. Uh, so for the insurance, uh, I shop around. And then after shopping around, you can do your insurance month to month. But if you were to pay your insurance all up front and once you save uh, doing that bulk payment and then also, uh, like you mentioned about the coverage, you go and ask questions as to what covers what, what is it, how is that going to raise your, your insurance? And then whatever you uh, believe and feel that you definitely will will need, you pay uh, whatever you think is an excessive, you cut off, and then uh, you purchase in that insurance plan um, tailor made to yourself, and not just you know like I used to pay, uh, purchase insurance, you know oh yeah give me the standard rate, um, and not truly do your homework. And what what is being like you said covered? Uh, why is it being covered and and so forth? So if you do that, and then as far as the electricity bill, um, there's a website I, I forget the name of it, but it compares all the plans within Texas, and and in the Houston area, depending on the zip code you live, and then most insurance uh, more uh, most light companies will give you like. Um, if you get over 10,000 watts of usage, you'll pay two cents, right? But what they don't tell you is that most likely you will not reach those 10,000 watts. Most likely you, you'll fall between the range of 500 to 1,000 on average. So they give you the, the, the lower rate at the higher usage. But you never gonna re usually you wouldn't reach that usage, so you never get those savings. And then the lower rates, uh, the lower use uh, watts, they give it to you like uh, let's say twenty cents, thirty cents, and so you you're you're never getting those savings. So what I advise is that you get in a plan that averages out each of those categories. So for example, the plan I'm currently on with Reliance, uh, at most. I'm paying $60 and it averages uh, like uh, the lower category of Watts 500. Uh, it's like 11 cents. And then from a thousand above uh, to, I believe 15,000 is like 12 cents. And then the higher category is like 12 cents. So regardless of what I use, uh, it fluct it's not going to fluctuate that much. And so you could do that. And, and when you get your light bill, if you flip it on the backside, it shows you what the the amounts you pay for what it's usage. That's something I do with that. 
great stuff. Uh, you can, you nerd or free spender, you, you know, he's the spreadsheet nerd of the family, <laughs> um, but all great points. Um, it almost reminds me of like the old, if we're old enough to remember, you know, when you had to buy your cell phone plan by the minutes. Well, you know what you're, yeah, this, this is this, you know, is, oh, you're getting a, you're getting a hundred minutes. A, it's the reverse of the cell phone. You're getting a hundred minutes a month for $2. Well, what they don't tell you is most typical people use a thousand. And it's yeah, yep, yeah, that's what kind of what rang my bell there, reminded me a little bit. Speaking of utilities, real quick, if you have been with your current provider for a year, call them and ask them to go on budget billing or average billing. Average billing means they're going to look at your last 12 months because you're saying, well, how do you budget for electricity? How do you budget for gas? Because it's always up and down, up and down, up and down. Average billing, they will take your 12 months, divide it by 12, and then they will bill you that same amount every single month. That's how you budget for utilities. Not everyone will do it, and you have to have a 12-month history. And so on month 13, month one drops off, and then months two through 13, and that's the average then. So it may change a few cents a month based on usage, but... Um, if you ask to be on average billing, I will say this, now that we're heading into the fall weather and it's starting to cool off, that's the time to ask your AC for your air conditioner because you're not going to use it as much in the fall. That's when you want to go. Um, you don't want to go necessarily on electrical budget billing. You do. Now's the time to start getting on natural gas budget billing because if you have a gas heater, your gas bill is going to creep up a little bit as the weather gets cooler. Don't know if that applies to Houston or not, but um, you in the fall, you want to be asked to be put on budget billing for gas. And in the spring, just before it's going to get hot and your AC is going to run, you want to ask your electrical provider. Um, again, it's a phone call. Hey, what do you guys offer budget billing? Some call it budget billing. Some call it average billing. Do you guys offer average billing? If so, what can you look at my usage? What would my average monthly bill be? You plug that into a budget sheet and then it's no muss, no fuss. You don't have a cow if one month it's a little bit higher than the other and you're trying to do this stupid budgeting stuff. So that's how we overcome that. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Money saving tips. Everybody share one. You can put it in the chat or you can talk. Well, this okay. is kind of, uh, mine was um, grocery shopping in the past. I just bought groceries, stacked up, not no quarter or anything, but I just bought a lot more than I would cook for that month. And so now I am being more considerate of what I'm actually going to cook and by what I'm going to cook. So yes, that has been a savings for me. Well, and you don't, and you spend less money. I I, I yes. joke with some of some, you know, I used to joke with some of my clients. It's like you want your emergency fund. Open your pantry and freezer. There's your stupid emergency fund. You got 18 bags of tater tots, and you use one a month. You know? And I also too, I, when I do cook, I, cause I carry my lunch. I'm not, I don't buy lunch. I cook my own, my own healthy foods. So I cook my own food, put it in containers, label and date it. And so I pull from there and even my breakfast, pull from there and take it to work. Now there are some weeks that we do, we just going to eat out the freezer, not cooking. We're going to eat what's in the freezer. So you know, some of these I'm already using. So thank you. Oh, well, well, well done. Well done. That is so good. I'm proud for you for that. Those are good, good tips. Oh my gosh. Someone actually takes their lunch to work. Are you okay? Are you making it? <laughs> you know, if, if someone says, you know, you tell someone to take their lunch to work and they look at you like you're from Mars or something. Are you kidding me? You know, again, yeah. it's not easy. You know, this money stuff, if it were easy, everybody would do it. And Greg, it's been years. It's been years. And I've been what on my you, job for 30-some years. Yep, and it's been 
Somebody said, I have not bought lunch. I don't even go out to lunch. Yep. I don't even to the cafeteria. So, yeah, you can do it. Yep. Yep. You just develop the habit and, and you know, um, over the over the course of 30 years, can you imagine how much money you've saved versus going out to eat for lunch? I mean, it's it, I mean, it's thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. You guys, there's a perfect living example. 30 years, you know, and and so, yep. Money saving tips. Who's got something? Well, Greg, this is Diana. And um, as I stated before, I'm shopping in my pantry. But I'm also going back to using my coupons. Everybody's not a coupon person, but I'm a coupon person and I got away from it. But I am going back to using my coupons. Yeah, my wife and I, we use them especially for restaurants because um, our, again, this is our choice. You said, hey, we have some fun categories. Uh, yes, we have entertainment. Yes, we have boat. Yes, we have classic cars. Um, yes, we have, oh, I don't know what else is fun, extra giving, but what we don't have, you guys will, you guys will laugh at our eating out budget. Our, our restaurant eating out budget is $75 a month. So you better darn toot and think we're looking for coupons and, you know, and we're, we're, you know, on purpose. We're not, we're not, we, again, we have all the money that we need for the rest of our lives and we give, give, give. Um, so these are our choices. I would rather give a ton of money away than go drop a hundred dollars on food. So we are, we are the, uh, what are they called? The, the, when we eat, you know, we are, we are going to the places. What's, what's the, the Panda Express and some of those where you go through the line and you get your meal and, and you don't have to tip and we're eating water and we're stretching our $75 as much as we can per month. Now, again, remember, each one of us has $125 pocket money. So if we choose to go out to lunch on our own, that comes out of our pocket. The $75 in, is when my wife and I are together. But choices, choices. Now, Greg, you know, one thing that you brought to my attention, I was a bulk shopper. I would go to this and I'm just I'm just me. I'm just one person in my household, but I would shop at Sam's or Costco. I was a bulk shopper and my pantry is full, but I would still find a way to say, oh, I'm hungry. And I just stop in the middle of the day, pull up into a, a drive through and spend money, you mm -hmm. know? So yeah, that, that was me. So this has helped me quite a bit. Um, another tip. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid to ask for senior discounts, restaurants, hotels, those types of things. Um, so, Diana, yeah, to that point, again, we're not going to beat you up for that. And I don't want you to beat yourself up for that. More than likely, when you took that money quiz, and I don't remember how you answered, of course, anything, but possibly, I, I may guess wrong totally, but for those of us who are stocker uppers or we either love deals we can't turn down a deal or food was scarce for us when we were growing up as children. And so we have this innate fear that, oh my gosh, you know, we ran out of food at home or my mother always had stuff on hand, it, one or the other, either, either food was scarce. So we've got to buy in bulk or we've got to store up or mom always had it in the pantry. So that's the right thing to do because that's what I was taught. Um, and, and if you look at the things our parents and grandparents had in the pantry, they didn't have 18 frozen meals. They had dry goods. You know, they had they had beans and they had, you know, corn and they had, you know, flour and sugar. Um, you know, uh, so you, you can't don't beat yourself up. And we're certainly not. But just understand where that behavior is coming from and ask yourself, hmm. You're right. I don't need 18 cans of tomato sauce. I'd rather put 10 bucks in my emergency fund and get that built up. So yeah. thanks for sharing. Thanks no, you're welcome. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, everybody's, got to, everybody's got to share one before we go. Okay. Uh, this is for like Costco and Sam's membership. So you, you pay a set amount and before your membership, renews maybe prior to two weeks or maybe even a month 
you cancel your membership, you get your payment, and then you go back and get your membership with the same 100 and something dollars you paid. Now what now? You're going to cancel a membership a year before, I mean, a month before. It, say, say that again now. I don't, I don't so know. You know like every, every year your membership comes for renewal. Okay. Uh, but Costco's uh, policy, return policy is they will, once you cancel your membership, they'll give you your money back. So you cancel before your membership is up. They give you your money back and then you go back and renew your membership with the same one hundred and twenty dollars instead of paying a one hundred and or whatever it is that you pay each month. I mean, each uh, year you use the same m money and, and don't use new money. OK, didn't know. Didn't know they did that. Okay. I thought that I mean, was a one time thing. You know, uh, if you look at their policy, it says uh, you can cancel your membership and uh, refund your membership fee at any time if you're dissatisfied. But you got to make sure you cancel before your renewal comes up. Like if your re renewal comes up, you can't cancel anymore. You have to repay to continue your membership. I'm surprised they allow something like that. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, I don't, I don't know if they know, but I mean, when they tell me, yeah, we'll give you your money back whenever before your membership is up, if if you are dissatisfied, and I'm like, well, I thought about it, and I said, what if I get dissatisfied two or a month before my membership is renewed? Oh, hmm. <laughs> yeah, we just need to be. I, and again, I'm not. I, if that's I mean, the policy, go for it. We just need to be careful that we're not doing anything dishonest or unethical. And if that's their policy, then that's their policy. Uh, take advantage of it. You know, interesting. Desiree writes using leftover, uh, using leftover chef. You put leftovers in items and have it. Yeah, yeah. Leftover, leftover foods. You know, leftovers. You know, put them in food storage containers and go, 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 go. So thank you for sharing. Has everybody shared a tip? I think so. I think we're good. It's 10 after 8. I'm going to give you 10 minutes, 10 minutes back. Yeah, go ahead. I was saying using leftover chef. It's a it's an app where you can take and put in foods that you have, like leftovers, and they'll create meals for you. Thank you, Desiree. I I had not heard of that app. I'm and I do Weight Watchers and whatnot. So basically, you open your pantry, you dump in your contents, and it creates a meal or a recipe for you based on the ingredients you put in. Yes. Ah, there you there you go, Diana. Man, you can be entering stuff in that app for days. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Leftover chef. I'm going to have to tell my wife about that yeah. one. Because we stay, yeah. yeah, how many of us open the pantry door and stand there and stare at it? And we're like, what can I make? That's fun. That's fun. Does anybody have any other thing? Coach Kelly Lytle, she is the one who did the budget video. And if you uh, if you didn't watch that budget video, watch that budget video uh, on how to actually do the spreadsheet. Um, and if you guys maybe on our last uh, on on one of our two last sessions, let me uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this uh, course syllabus real quick. Uh, preventing, okay, so Kelly's going to do next week being a smart consumer, finding extra money. She'll probably, you'll hear some of that stuff, uh, but she'll tell some stories about the mortgage and insurances and some of those things. So there's your homework. Know the amount of your insurance costs and your deductibles on your home, car, and renter's insurance. So I want you to bring that for Coach Kelly next week. What are you paying a month for insurance and what are your deductibles? Dig those out. And then maybe on this October 12th, preventing ID theft, credit scores, money offers, 
I mean, that's more of a buyer beware kind of type stuff. We've talked about the credit score, how it is not a indicator of how you're doing with money. Your savings account and your retirement account is a better indicator of how you're performing with money as opposed to your credit score. Um, we'll talk a little bit about ID theft and monitoring, but if you guys want me to, would it be helpful if I would go through real time and and on the budget sheet and show you guys how to fill that in and actually create a budget live and in person with with you guys? Would you, would you want me to do that just to show that you? That would be nice. Sure. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Well, I'll do that. In the meantime, if you have time, look at Coach Kelly's video on how to do it, but I'll... I'll, we'll get to the nuts and bolts of it because it's a great budget sheet. Investing for beginners, that's that's a very good topic. Um, that's going to be, I want you guys to know the amount of payroll deducted for retirement. Um, you should know that anyway. Uh, and how much is going into retirement. And again, consider pausing it for a year if you're deeply in debt and things are tied on a monthly basis. And then we're going to talk about communication between aging parents and young adults and adult children. What does that look like? You know, whether or not, and some of us, we're in two categories. Some of us, we've got 20 and 30 year old sons and daughters. Meanwhile, we still have living 80 and 85 and 90 year old mothers or fathers. So what's that communication look like with your parents? And what does it look like with your adult children? Are they copying what you're doing with money? Do they know that if you died tomorrow, do they know where your junk is and your stuff is? Are you are you set up for all of that? Or are you going to leave them a mess and let them worry about it? Well, in my opinion, that's not honoring God with our money. Yeah. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about what kind of paperwork do we need to get in order and how do we begin that communication? Well, our kids don't need to know anything about our finances. Well, possibly so, but they they need to know certain things. All right, great stuff tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed tonight. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna close this in prayer if that's okay, and then we will go uh, leftover chef. I got to remember that. Father God, we just thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for these fine folks who are. Uh, spending and giving up an hour or hour and a half of their time each and every week. Uh, again, love the Lord's Prayer. The very first thing you ask us to ask for, you, we say, Lord, how are we supposed to pray? Pray like this. And the first thing that he tells us to ask for after we proclaim your greatness, our Father who art in heaven, you teach us to say, please give us this day our daily bread. You always have, you always will. With that daily bread, however, you require of us to be great stewards. Are we being good stewards with that daily bread? And Lord, that's what you know. we hope to gain and hope to improve on, myself included, each and every day of our lives when it comes to finances. We just don't talk about it enough, nor do we take the time to learn about it. But stewarding is such a huge, important biblical perspective. Help us to get better, Lord. Um, help us to make some of these tough choices. Give us this day our daily bread and help everyone on this call for our personal finances to improve just a tiny bit. And we love you. We thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Great job tonight, everybody. We'll see you later. Enjoy it, Greg. Good night. Good night. Thank Good night. you.